Okay, so it has two constructors. Uh, another thing, actually, another syntactic thing is constructor names start with a capital letter or they start with a colon because um, we're going to see one of those. So it's either a capital letter or a colon. And if it starts with a colon, it's in infix position by default. Is everyone cool with that? Just syntax. But yeah, this is polymorphic. So I can so if we have a look at the type of say one, given A, return one or two of A. It constructs one of those. So let's so A is anything. We can give it absolutely anything, such as that. And that says it returns a one or two of list of character, which is also known as a string. And I can evaluate it. Because I've derived show, it will print. What is the type of one i? Where's i? There's i. Type error. Who says type error? Nobody says type error. No one's game to say type error. <clears throat> well, let's have a look at the type of one. One takes anything. I is a thing. Therefore, we know it's not a type error. That's enough reasoning. That we, that's all we have to do. However, what is the type? Now, these A's are different to these A's. They're different A's, the way that they're scoped. <clears throat> all right, so this A here is scoped here only. And this A is scoped here. So that is to say this A will turn into that. Do you agree with that? If I pass in one of those? And we don't have an instance. We don't know the A of the type Oh yeah, we still don't know. So therefore it'll be a lowercase value, a lowercase name because it's a type variable. But that means that since that A turned into that type there, then that A must turn into that type there. And therefore, the type of one I is one or two of function that given function integer to A returns A. English is terrible at this. There it is. All right, so that A on the, on the argument that came in, got specialized down. <clears throat> if I take i and I give it, let's say, um, what did it say, given an integer, given an integer, put it in a list twice. The type of this is going to be one or two of list of numbers, of integers, sorry. All right, so the type inferencer is working all this out. Now, in reality, I don't sit down and work out types. I have a type inferencer to do that for me. But I want you to understand the process of what's happening here. The inferencer is calculating the types. And in fact, that's got a show, so we can show it. There it is. Yep. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. um, one, one of those you call a type of class, the, the, or a data type, the other yep. you call a constructor, but are, are one and two implicitly also the types? So one, one or the, the name one or two is a data type name, okay? And one and two is a data constructor name, okay? Now sometimes people just call them constructors. Type class is another thing which we will look at. <clears throat> so basically on the left side of equals are data type names and on the right side are constructors. Um, and constructors have arguments, etc. I mean, in fact, I think I've written that down somewhere. Did I? Oh, here we go. So data types are declared using the data keyword. Following the data keyword is a data type name. 
following the type name are zero or more type variables. So one or two has one type variable following it, that's the A. Then the equal sign has zero or more constructors, and they start with an uppercase or colon. Following each constructor is a list of its arguments. So one takes one argument, and two takes two arguments, if we remember back here. So there's, its, there's one's list of arguments, and there's two's list of arguments. <clears throat> Between each constructor is a pipe, and the deriving keyword which we've looked at. When the constructors appear on the left of equals, we are pat matching. So let's have a look at that. Here they are on the left of equals. And actually that sentence should also say on the left of that arrow. We are also pat matching. So we are pat matching and when they appear on the right, which we have not done in this source file, we are constructing. So I can construct one, I can just say I constructed a shape. <coughs> it's on the right side of equals. Does that make sense? Yeah? Can you explain again how it derives the, the type of one of I? Yep. So, so let, let's, let's have a look at the type of one. All right, so is everyone happy with the type of one? It takes an A and returns a one or two of A. The reason that's its type is because that's how many arguments it takes in its constructor. It takes one thing and constructs the entire thing. Happy with that? Okay. Since the A is lowercase, it is a type variable, it can be anything. Anything including itself a function. I is a function. I has that type. The A's, the A's are just incidentally named the same, but they're two different A's, the way that they're scoped. Therefore, and in fact, I can, I can actually change it if it would help. Let's change it just to try and help a little bit. We'll turn this into X. So now when I ask for the type of one, it's X to one or two of X. X can be anything, including the type of I, which is that. If I became, oh, sorry, if X became this type here, then this x must also change into that type. Therefore, when I do that, I get exactly that type back. All right, so the a, or sorry, the x turned, it got special, x could be anything, but now it's specifically that thing. Okay. It's just like if you added up a list of elements, they must become numbers. But if you reverse the list, well, it's just still a list of anything, isn't it? <coughs> um, the, the, only, the only sort of magic that's going on here is the type inference is going all the way along the program and figuring it all out. I don't have, me, the programmer, I don't have to do any work. It just calculates it. All right, how's everyone feeling? We're on time. We're nearly finished. Data types, pattern matching. Uh, by the way, I, I like to give you um, a bit of vocabulary because if you get, you know, next week you're going to type this into a search engine, you're going to see Greek words again. You know, what was that guy talking about again? Um, algebraic data type, that's what this is called. All right, so shape is an algebraic data type. We pattern matched it. When you see algebraic data type next week, it's just a data type. Fancy words. Well, that's not Greek. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Um, if, if I look at the, the type of the constructor one and two, mm -hmm. they both return a value of the type one or two. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how does it remember which one it came from in order to do the pattern matching? Is that all done by the compiler? And then yeah. I mean, if I, let, let's, if, if I make one, um, so I'll just make one, All right? So that means that Fred is a one or two integer, All right? That works out. <clears throat> and then uh, I write a function that's now going to add up all the integers, right? So if it's one, just return it. If it's two, add them up and return it. So then I go, given 
the one or two, match it. If it's one, call it X, return it. And if it's two, do X plus Y. Right, and so the answer to your question is, um, like if we look at the type of Mary, given a one or two integer, return integer, I can pass in Fred, I'll get the integer. Because Fred was constructed with the two constructor, this match is the one that's going to occur. Okay? And that's why it's 187. So, so it, suppose I have an, a, a list or an array of one or two yep. uh, values. Mm -hmm. Is each of those still tagged with its original? Absolutely it is. Yeah. <coughs> mm-hmm. Can you read it? Uh, can I read it? Yeah. No. Do you want me to read that out? No. If it's big enough for you to read. Do you want me to pronounce that? That's, that's up to you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Declared is equivalent to this. What's uh, B? Yeah, just that's change names. Name. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. The same. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah. GHC just has to come up with a name. No, I know. Yeah. Would that be interesting for them? Oh, maybe. I don't know. So, uh, in that, if you leave off the type, you tell me if I'm I'm doing this right. I'm not sure quite what the point is, right? But if I leave off this type, and I go, what's the type of I? GHC just came up with some names, and in this case, T1, T2. We also saw a new arrow. Sorry about that. I'll tell you about that in a minute. No, no, you can. Put the type there, but you yeah. can say that. I, I, I can rename this to be that as long as it's the same as that. Yeah. Yeah. And it starts with a lowercase. Yeah, but still it is. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I'm going a step further saying that you can even declare and state that. As long as you have the same name, yeah. the size of this thing. Well, if I didn't make them the same name, it won't compile. No, yeah. So just as long as they're the same name. Yeah. You can put anything you want there, as long as they're the same name. I am agnostic on identifier names. I don't care. If you have another name, put it there. <coughs> Okay. All right, any questions at this point? Yep. So the compiler is actually pattern matching the cases of Mary to know that it's a one or two type? It well, at, yeah, at runtime, it's inspecting the type and saying, how, we, how was that constructed? And because Fred was constructed with the constructor two, then the case analysis matches on that one. It goes top down. Um, this case, um, ju just a little a point on code style. If I swap those two lines of code around, they are the s that's still the same program. All right, nothing changed, regardless of what I pass in. It's still the same program, and that's because these two patterns are non-overlapping. So that so the set of things that are constructed with one is distinct from the set of things constructed with two. They don't overlap. So this is called non-overlapping patterns. Alternatively, let's, let's, I'll show you what an overlapping pattern looks like. If I said something like this, <clears throat> all right, that's actually a bit more syntax I haven't shown you yet, which this just says match anything. Okay, that compiles, that runs. But if I swap these two lines around, they're two different programs, and these patterns overlap. And that's because there's the set of things that are constructed with two, and then the underscore is just absolutely everything. So they're not, they're not disjoint sets. So the code style is I tend, or I tend to use non-overlapping patterns. It's easier to read. So you can reason about each of them independently. <clears throat> yeah. So when you're writing, how, how do you know how far to index, like for the case? Yeah. Um, I actually don't know. 
Haskell's indenting rules. I have some rules in my head that work, and I don't know the exact rules. I've been writing Haskell for about 16 years, and I've never learned the rules. <laughs> and I'm at the point now where I refuse to learn the rules. I just don't want to. Um, so um, as long as you've got tabs turned off, and we're going to do some exercise today, and if you mess it up, that's fine. We'll just fix it up. So one of the things that today, by the way, is I don't want to teach you syntax. I, I just have to in order to get to our goals. So if you make a syntactic error, I'll just fix it, right? Because you're not here to learn syntax. You can go and read a book about that. We're going to learn how to, I've taken away your for loops, for example. They're gone. They, they went back there. You might not have noticed. But when I told you that, and you said, I want to still be here, then you've, your for loops are gone. Um, <laughs> right? So. My goal is to give you problem-solving tools. Now that I've taken things away from you, I want to substitute in, in new things. So in order to get there, I'm going to teach you syntax. If you screw the syntax up, that's fine. Just free, fixed. But I actually don't know. So it seems to work. <laughs> um, let me just check where we're up to. Um, Done all that. I'll oh, we'll do a recursive data type. Type classes. All right. I'll do a recursive. We'll do one more data type, <coughs> just to make a point. <coughs> I'm going to call this data type natural, mostly because that's its canonical name anyway. It is a set of natural numbers. I'll derive equality and show. So this is our third data type. Um, it has no type variables. So it's just its name is natural. It has two constructors. One is called zero, has no arguments. The other one is called successor, and it has a value of the same type as itself as an argument. OK. Um, this is called the, uh, the natural number data type. Like um, I can write one. That's one. That is two. And I can go on and on. I can write addition. Let's write addition. I haven't done this for years, so I'll see if I can do it. Um, <laughs> let's add two natural numbers. All right, like three plus four. Well, let's, first, let's construct some, because otherwise we've got a lot of typing to do. So one is this. Two is this. Um, that, let's just add two and two. Otherwise, we're typing a lot. <coughs> All right, we'll write add. Let's add, given a natural and a natural, return a natural. All right, everyone happy with that? Give them two naturals, join them together. <coughs> All right. Here's how I'm going to solve it. If that natural is zero, return that one. Is everyone happy with that statement? If that number is not zero, then it is successor. It's the only other constructor. Then get the value out of it. And then add that value to this natural and call successor on that. All right, so in other words, let's say we've got, say, three and four. So, th well, we're gonna, I'm not going to have three because I didn't write it, but you can write it. So if we've got three and four, and I go, is three zero? The answer is no. But it is the successor of two when I pattern match it. Therefore, I'm going to do add two and four and call successor on that. All right, does that make sense? So that, that's, that's the English way of writing it. Let's turn it into Haskell. So if that is zero, now I need to come up with a name for the second one, as long as it's lowercase. And I'm going to return the second one. All right, should compile, but non-exhaustive patterns. We've got the successor case to go. The only other thing it can be is a successor. <coughs> All right. 
So these are non-overlapping exhaustive patterns. Does everyone agree with that? They do not overlap, zero successor, and they are exhaustive. That's all the cases handled. Now, if this natural is constructed with successor, with that value, that means then if I add x and y and call the successor on that, it will add up two natural numbers. Add two and two is four. Let's write, I write this. There's two and uh, three, four. Oh, I need to do that. That's true. And that's false. Yep. So looking at this reminds me of a thing of finding PR numbers in Scala with mm -hmm. the type system. Um, in the type system, yeah. This is not in the type system. So this is the type system. Yeah. Just, I, I guess that's probably jumping ahead, but can uh, similar thing be done in Haskell like that? Okay. Can you do it in Haskell? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's that's a thing to do today, though. <laughs> but you you can do tight level naturals in Haskell. Yeah. Sure. Sorry. <clears throat> All right. And this is called a recursive algebraic data type because its definition refers to itself. All right. Um, or piano numbers, as, as someone pointed out. The, the encoding, that is to say, naturals are zero or successor of itself, is known as the piano number encoding. Just Why did you say it was called the recursive algebraic data type? Okay, so if we look at the others, so let, let's have a quick look at, say, this one. The name does not appear in its definition. Right, we don't see one or two over here. However, in natural, it refers to itself in one of the constructors. And so it's recursive in its definition. When we use recursive algebraic data types, we tend to use recursive functions on them. So this is a recursive function. Add refers to itself in its definition. Yeah. Is there like a reason to pick one or the other here? No, because I'm, I've got to come up with a name anyway. Um, yeah, it's when I've got to define a function in line. Like if I was to call i, and I needed to come up with a function, and I'm like, I just want to write this function, I don't want to name it, then I would use, I'd just say lambda, then I'd have to come up with a name, scratch my head a bit, got the name, then write the function, and I never came up with the name add or anything like that. <coughs> um, let me just check something. I'm going to skip that. <laughs> yep, right. <coughs> All right. Any other questions? I reckon that's about 80% of Haskell. The last bit that I'll show you, well, I'll get you to 99%, is something called type classes. And type classes, what's a good type class? Uh, if I need to sort a list of elements, I need to sort a list of oranges and a list of trucks. And I don't want to write sort over and over again. Who wants to do that? Not us. But I do need to say that the elements satisfy natural ordering. All right, so if we say sort, um, is this going to be a good example? Uh, so sort, if I said sort has the type list of A to list of A, uh, hang on, I don't think it's a good example, hang on. Uh, what about the orange? Uh, 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. Eager Yeah, I'm thinking of Eek, actually, because it's simpler. But I'll go, oh, pardon? Yeah, uh, well, how about this, right? Um, yeah, so Mac, let's, write a, let's write a maximum function, even though that's a little bit ugly. That's, I really don't want to write that function, because what's the maximum of empty list? Um, the maximum of three elements. Here we go. Whew. All right, so max three takes A to A to A to A to A. So given three A's, return the one that's the most. A1, A2, A3. <clears throat> and I'll just write it out just to make it, because it's not quite the point. We're talking about type classes. So I'm going to say if A1 is less than A2, oh, this is going to be terrible, then if A2 is less than A3, then A3. <clears throat> else A2, uh, else A1, is that right? Well, have I messed it up? Uh, Let me try all the combinations. That's not right. Uh, so what, what did you say? Uh, this one here I have to do if... Uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, if A... But when... A1 is less than yeah. If A1 is less than A3, then A3. Else A1. Is everyone happy? Yeah. Thanks. Winging it. All right. <clears throat> All right. I'm glad we got that done. What is the type of max three? So it is. It is almost this. All right. Because. A can be anything, and it doesn't just work on anything, it's things that have an ordering, all right? So it got inferred to be almost that. It got inferred because I used this less than function. So if I do this, it won't type check, and it says, there's no instance for ord A arising from the use of less than. Less than requires that A is ord. So in order to resolve this, I would write that. So that fat arrow appears on the left, if it appears at all, once. And what this says is max3 has that type as long as A has an instance of that type class, ord type class. <clears throat> and I'll show you what that, I'll, I'll rewrite the ord type class just to demonstrate what's going on there. So that should compile now. Because the reason is, is like I can't take the max three of three functions like that. Functions do not compare for ordering, right? Well, actually, that says as long as you can give me an ordering for functions, then I'll give you back a function. But you're never going to be able to write that ordering for functions. So what does the ord type class look like? I'm going to rewrite it. We use the class keyword. And uh, I'll, I'll rename it just to, because uh, uh, otherwise it'll clash with the other one. I'll call that X. And I'm going to write, um, actually, before I do that, I'll tell you about another data type that's built in called ordering. All right. Oh, actually, before I do that, <laughs> I'll tell you about colon I. Haven't told you about colon I. Colon info. Colon info is the ultimate WTF in Haskell. <laughs> Right, it answers all the questions. So you'll be, this is going to happen today. You're going to be staring at your screen, and you you'll be like, "What is that?" And you spell "what is" colon info. 
What is ordering? Ordering is a data type that has three constructors, LT, EQ, and GT. It is defined over in this module. We won't go into modules, but it is. And it has these instances, and we're about to talk about instances. But the, importantly, the important thing is that's the data type. So we use this data type to return values that denote whether or not something is less than, equal to, or greater than. All right, so I'm going to write a function here. Um, actually, I don't even need to use that. So yeah, I don't even need to do that. I can actually just write a function called LT that takes x, x, and returns bool. Right, and this basically says, this is similar to an interface in Java. Right, I've said things Things that instance this interface implement this abstract function. Does that make sense? And actually, I'm going to I'm going to change my code. Kill with me doing that, so that I I use the one that I just wrote. All right, this now uses my type class, and that means that's going to change. Or in other words. If I left that off, because I have called LT on two values, those values must instance this type class. Does that make sense? And you can see that in the type that got inferred. It said X must instance that type, that, uh, that type class, I should say. So now, if I go max three, one, two, three, it says, I don't know how to compare, uh, let's not do that. Yeah, one, two, three. I don't know how to compare naturals for ordering. So I have to define it. Does that make sense? So we're assuming there's no real ord class built in. There is, but assume it there isn't. So I've written the type class, but I've not written the instance for natural. So therefore, I can't find the max three of three naturals. So you write the instance using the instance keyword. X becomes natural. And now I must write a function that has this type, natural. So X became natural, therefore LT is going to have that type in this context. <clears throat> and how do you compare two naturals for less than? Any ideas? Anyone done Priyana arithmetic? How would you do it? There's no negative numbers. So naturals are nev never negative. So remember, naturals are either zero or successor. <clears throat> yeah. How about if the first one is zero and the second one is successor, True. But if the first one is successor and the second one is successor, then recurse on the two underlying values. And if the first one is successor and the second one is zero, then false. Okay, so zero, successor, we don't name it, we don't care about its name. Then zero is less than the successor of anything. The successor of anything is never less than, ah, yeah, never less than zero. Hmm? If it's zero, zero. It's a good question. Zero is not less than zero. Does everyone agree with that? You got me there. So we could just change the second line to be LT underscore zero. Correct. 
uh, and then and reorder it. Is everyone happy with that? Like I said, I haven't done this in a while. Looks good to me. And now I can calculate the max three of these three natural numbers. And that is the maximum. So type class and an instance. This is the only instance. Yep. Um, so with type class instances, do you normally not specify the type signature? Like you have that. Yeah. You actually can't, if I remember rightly. Yeah. You you can by putting on putting an extension on, but you you can't do it. Is there a reason for that? Yeah. It's just not. It's invalid Haskell. According to the spec, <laughs> it's simple as that. Um, it was later added um, as an extension, and in our source file that we're going to look at later, it is turned on. Um, but it's just the Haskell spec said no. In production code, is the convention to use that extension all the time? Never. Oh. Gen well, I generally do not see it or use it. It is helpful to write it out so that you know what you're, you're doing. But once it's done, there's... I mean, if you don't write a function of that type, it will not... Leave that comment in the code or no? No. The type of LT uh, is that. And then the next thing to do is go, what is that? Well, it's that, and it has that instance. Therefore, I know that I can insert natural, natural there. Um, let's look at the real ord for a minute. I'll do that. Uh, not type info. What is ord? All right, let's have a quick look at what this says. This is the real built-in one. Just to have a have a look. There's a few new things here actually. This here is a constraint on the type class. All right, and this says when you write an instance for ord, you better have also written an instance for equality. Because if you haven't, it won't compile. Right, that's another type class. EQ is another type class. It's like a subtyping relationship. All things that are ORD have equality. Not all things with equality have ORD. Complex numbers, for example. And here it has many abstract functions. So compare that takes A to A and returns either LT, GT, or EQ less than, greater than, etc. And basically they're all defined in terms of each other and the minimal requirement is that you implement either compare or less than equal to and all the others will get filled in. There's an instance of ORD for int and for double and for char and so on. But where's a nice, nice one to look at? Let me find one. This one here is an ORD for a pair of A and B. So given a pair of an A and a B, any A and any B, you can have an ORD as long as there is an ORD for A and an ORD for B. That makes sense. All right, so if you've got like an integer and a string, as long as there's an ORD for integers and an ORD for strings, now you've got an ORD for the pair of the two things. Okay? Well done, you know Haskell. Yeah. Uh, is Haskell have a way to kind of guarantee your or the instance of all this total order, not something like you write a bonus? Nope. Okay. There are languages that do that. Haskell is not one of them. Yeah. If you are interested in those kinds of things, I highly recommend Agda. It's, it does those kinds of things. I mean, I could have written anything here, right? Okay. <clears throat> um, I think lunch is at 12. Is that right? Okay. Um, well, you know Haskell? Well done. Good on you. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is, uh, like, I've got five minutes and we'll go to lunch. Let's, let's uh, move on over to our cloned code. 
And let's open up a source file called sourcecourselist.hs. And we'll have a quick look at that, and then after lunch we'll, we'll write some code. There's a lot of stuff there, ignore all that. Keep scrolling down until you get to line, in this case, 34. <clears throat> and on line 34, we see a data type declaration. This data type is called list. Surprise. List has one type variable called T. How many constructors does list have? Two. Has two constructors. One is called nil. Nil has no arguments. The other one is that. It's in infix position. And there is a pronunciation for this constructor that has been around since the 1950s. So I'm not going to change it. I'm going to keep using it. Its name is CONS, C-O-N-S, CONS. CONS has how many arguments? Two. One is T, and the other one is a list of T. List is a recursive algebraic data type. The function does, correct, yes. The type of CONS. It does, you were right the whole time. It takes one argument, such as 99, or, yeah, 99. And by the way, 99 is not an integer. Just now that you know what type classes are, 99 is anything that implements the num type class. So this returns me back a function list of t to list of t, so as long as t instances num. Okay? So then I must pass in another int. Ah, oh, sorry, a list of, list of number in order to get a list. I need to pass in another list. All right, I will. How do I construct lists? Nil, Nil or cons? Let's go with cons. You all right with that? Let's go with cons. Oops. Now I need an integer. And now I need another list of integer. How do you construct lists? Nil or cons? Let's go with nil. All right, that is a list of t where t is a number. Well, we can keep going. Let's just do it just to demonstrate that. And then another, uh, uh, what have I done wrong? Yeah, that. <clears throat> All right, so wherever there was the nil, I can just put a new list in there. It's a list of t, so as long as t is a number. Now, you'll notice, by the way, that I have overridden the show instance. I did not derive it. I instanced it. And you don't have to know what that says, other than it's going to print nicely. That's all that says. There it is being printed nicely. All right, it didn't print out nil, cons, blah, blah, blah. I can move cons over into infix position by removing the parentheses. You agree with that? Remember the syntax rule? I can do this. So I've got con uh, cons, I remove the parens from prefix over infix. And I can do it here as well. And I can do it here as well. One more bit of syntax. This here says that cons is right associative. It says two things, but one of them is that it says it's right associative. Therefore, I can remove these parens. I don't need them. It associates to the right already. <clears throat> and then the other thing it says is, which comes first, plus or cons? So. We programmers define the order of precedence of operators, not Haskell. And plus came first. And the reason plus came first 
is if we have a look at plus, we see that it's first left associative, but it binds at a fixity of six. It binds tighter than cons. Is everyone following that? Plus happen first, because it binds tighter. And then the last thing I'll tell you, and then we'll go to lunch, because we're going to write code after lunch. So have a good lunch. The last thing I'll tell you is a bit of vocabulary, is that when a list is constructed with cons, and this vocabulary is decades old, so I'm going to use it. Constructed with cons, that means it carries a first element and then the rest of the list. That first element is called its head, and the rest is called its tail. And the first exercise we're going to do is to write a function that takes an A, a list of A, and returns an A. It's going to get the head of that list. But not all lists have a head. Nil does not have a head. Therefore, we're going to return that value in that case. All right? Enjoy your lunch. I'll see you in, is it an hour? I don't know. Is it an hour? All right.